At least just with one more face. Not a main issue. That should have fixed all. So we don't have any angles anymore. Which means that we basically got rid of all those issues. Not sure what happened here, but an entire baffle disappeared on us. You can see you can also add the baffle one by one. That's gonna make it a little bit more manageable to fix the issues. I do feel like it's a little bit faster to just add them all at one time and then spend some time fixing issues. So now it's pretty much back at following the features a little bit better. Select all the outer edges. Let's clean that up one more time. So that's on the center line. Let's do a final check on like the, the UVs and all. So I'm doing optimize. Some stuff going on here. This is if you have a little floating you feel like this, usually it means that there's something wrong. can use those UVs to check if there's stuff wrong with the model. And let's just apply the checker. This should all be pointing in the same direction more or less. I think that's good enough. Do like a final check of the topology from like you now the flow and whatever.
think that looks pretty, pretty good. Do you want to take? And select all and, and fold that layout. I mean. I think it's baking pretty well. There's some baking issues here and there, but we'll fix that later. I think it's good enough. Move to the next stage. Stand up. Gonna freeze everything. I'm gonna make a duplicate and scale this in the X. If it's messed up. Now we can merge this together. Now merge both these. Put this at the lowest that you can. Now I'm gonna sew all those middle lines. before we do that uh, let's take this all let's just take this and do modify flip So now we can move and see that. It's giving a bad result. Let me just reposition that. That should be better. Add some this here. Now that's zoomed together nicely. Let's unfold this. need to be zoomed together as well. Got some stuff going on here. I think the stretching isn't too bad, let me check. I think that's okay. This is definitely messed up here. Let's 
go ahead and baffle this. The shading. Do one more quick test. Go ahead and um, mirror this one. This wasn't completely in the center. It's okay, we can just do this. And now let's merge them. Some weird stuff going on here that we can quickly fix.
I'm gonna keep this curtain too, so we can fill out the UV space a little bit better. were merged everything had to be way smaller let's bake let's also do an ambient occlusion bake and see how everything's starting to come together Some really strange stuff going on here. And that's because this isn't symmetrical. Should edit this part a little bit. We got some more symmetry issues here and there. But overall, I think it's starting to get nice. a little bit more on getting this all done and the next up will be the the goggles so let's work a little bit on the symmetry so we need to adjust the topology to follow this better. So I'm gonna come in with the quattro. Make a little bit of space. Now with soft select, we can just kind of push this out, make this a little bit bigger, sometimes we gotta push it out. We just gotta kinda go over everything and make sure everything is matching up well. Let's go ahead and start here. So this doesn't seem to be matching that well here. I 
I think the easiest way will be to disable uh, life surface. Now with soft select we just kind of push stuff in the right place more or less. And later we can actually put it right. Now we just want to get it more or less. So let's make a transparent material to do this. Lambert has got this. Transparent. Now we can start to realign everything here. It's gonna be a little bit faster and easier than if everything was snapping all the time. symmetrical your mesh was, the less of a pain. It's one of those really annoying steps, as you feel like you finished and just the symmetry, but then you gotta readjust everything a bit. It shouldn't be too difficult, because we already figured out how the topology should flow. That's the longest part. That's just matching those features up again. We already have UVs for everything as well. Just need to re-enfold it a little bit. You can also use the rotate, soft select to quickly rotate a bunch of stuff. You can see it's not too difficult, just readjusting. And that's all. But it sure is really annoying to do.
This should all be symmetrical, so we don't need to worry about that. Thank God. Again, it's better to push it too far out than have it go in, because it will be easier to fix. We do have to fix quite a lot. So this should be totally different here. And to make it uh, transparent again. You can go ahead and enable the default material. So that one. Let's see. Get rid of all this stuff here. I'm just gonna square this all out to make a grid. We have a little issue with that, it seems like. So let's delete that. For these ones, we can kind of move them so we can surround this. And we can make this one end here. This one here. Is this depth starting a little bit later? So on this one we're gonna start the hole here. So 
it's gonna be like that and we need to merge these together This can be a little bit difficult to see what we need to actually move. So I'm just going to start off with all the easy verts to move. Then we can slowly work our way up to the more difficult looking ones. see if we focus on hatch at a time it becomes pretty manageable so I'm just trying to not overwhelm myself with all the changes that we need to do so rotating around the model working on little areas by the time It's a pretty easy one as it doesn't have a baffle. You can see if we figure out one. But stuff kind of falls into place, it can help us with the next one. That way we can slowly start matching everything up. You can mess up with the high here. Shouldn't have left all that space here. We can decide to add it in the low. Especially if you only have depth on one side, then it's going to be pretty annoying because we need to switch up the topology. You can see I'm really just jumping from one part to the other part, working a little bit here, then going back here. This way everything just falls into place. Of course you can also just finish one part at a time if that's what you prefer. Go ahead and go back here. Let's get the multi cut and cut some depth in. Let's 
Kita naik satu ya. See how very slowly but surely starting to match everything up. You can see I'm trying to follow that first layer of leather with our baffle. Don't like how that's ending. This will get a little bit of better shading. I'm starting off with a pretty low resolution so we can do the thickness and then just add more that way we have to do a little bit less work do you want to add a baffle there Sometimes it's better to turn that light source off, so we can cut something in, then it doesn't displace as badly. Actually we can continue this baffle here. I think that should work. Set some more resolution here. Smooth it out and see how fast that it looks. So I want to have a little bit more.
that's looking pretty nice now. Just make sure it's all matching well. a little bit of resolution so I feel like this piece will um, have quite a lot of tension on the eye as it sticks out a lot shifts a little bit further Give this some quick UVs. So you can see this messed all up. The way we can fix it is just selecting these pieces. stuff going on here Now we slowly but surely will fix up the UVs again. Take all this together. You can see here we have the cut so we're gonna follow that and put a hard edge as well. This should be a hard patch, not so cut. We have another hard edge and a cut. Then we need to cut this out. So the best way we can do that is to make sure it like follows something. Now we can put this to a hard edge as well and cut. Now let's do the same here if we can. So we can do it with this one. And harden 
that sham cut. Then this one should be sewn together. Except for here. Should be in hot edge. And cut. And the same here. seam do that here then this should be merged together And this one I'm gonna convert to a soft edge. Now to fix this, we can take one of those UVs, grow the selection. Let's take this one, this one. Just gonna take a few of them, grow it, and optimize or unfold. That pretty much fixes it. that looks a lot more proper the UVs now take a look if we have some weird things see that together This area looks a little strange. That should be fine now. This one should have a baffle.
that should do it. I'm gonna pack this all together. Like safe. I'm gonna check out how this area breaks down. I'm gonna export it and open up mama set. So let's go ahead and rebake. You can see that looks a lot better. Little bit of an issue there. Just gonna go ahead and fix that really fast. To fix issues like this, you go to paint offset, show offset. You can just paint them away like this. This is really the power of marmoset baking that you don't need custom cages. You can just paint it away, which is amazing. And then you'd go ahead and rebake. That's all looking fine now. So that's how we will fix these issues later on. So let's continue matching this stuff up. See here, it's really mismatching the features. work a little bit on this area A little bit of that too. Let's clean that topology out.
So I'm selecting all the hot edges here because every hot edge should be a UV cut. I'm gonna cut that up. If it makes a weird cut, it means that we have a hot edge at the wrong place. So soften and move and seal. And there isn't much to this, I'm just going in and lining everything up again. We can go here for a reference to see how it should look like. Let's check the shading. Fine.
put a little bit more detail here. So we can put a triangle. Put another one here. That's gonna capture the shape a little bit better. Don't think we need one here. see like little things like this really bite you in the butt with retopology when you have some empty space it's gonna be way harder to retop so that's all stuff to keep in mind for next time to be even more careful about little holes I think we're getting pretty far now, most of it is matched at this point. I'm not speaking too much of uh, the recording because I think everything that I'm doing now is very uh, repetitive and doesn't need explanation. It's just matching features like we did on the other side. This one's pretty excessive to put in. I'm gonna see if that works with the shading. And if it does, I'll keep it in. I'm 
into dust and that's good. And capturing little uh, plane changes like that's just really gonna push the detail. as well. And then re-triangulate it so it's pointing the right way, the triangle. This like detailing your low, putting these little cuts in here and then, then following the the folds a bit, triangulation. I'm just trying to follow that paneling. This should be on just the start of the ladder layer and this one on the end of that little curvature that we put in ZBrush for the stitch tension. By really putting an effort into placing these edges just right, we're gonna get a really nice low poly at the end. don't need to be this precise when doing low polys for your personal work or whatever. But if you want to get a really nice looking clean low poly you do need to put the time in. And when you're working for like a production asset you kind of need to go for a happy in between. Where you don't spend too much time on the low but still get it pretty nice. But for this asset in specific, I want to try to get a result as good as I can. And you can see we need to add some a little bit more topology here. Bake. Come check out those UVs really quick. I think you can tell that we're getting a pretty nice bake now. For 
following that shape well here. Yeah. That's all looking good. This looking a little bit uh, iffy. pretty much matched everything at this point. So this seems a little bit wrong. At this point I want to be a little bit more uh, thoughtful of my low poly now that we have a pretty good base. Actually uh, let's not do that yet, we'll do that a little bit later. And I'll show you what I mean by that. There's going to be some pretty complex low poly modeling that we're going to do in a bit. First let's go ahead here and put these, uh, these faults in. And delete the history here. Keep it fast. So just follow the direction of the faults with your triangulation. That should be enough for something like this. instead of letting the render engine decide how the quad should be triangulated we're gonna do it ourselves so we can really decide how the volume flows because usually when you uh, not usually always when you put a 3d model in a render engine it's only gonna have triangles so it's gonna take every little quad it's gonna triangulate it but we can do this ourselves to, to match our high banner, which is great. There's also something that's really gonna push your low to the next level. Just little edits like this. I think there's also something that confuses a lot of beginners when they see an art station like the topology of a character and then see all the stuff triangulated. Just know that we're doing this to follow the, the faults banner. And you can go super extreme with this, like uh, right here, if we take a look here. How this is folding, the triangulation should be going like, like this. So we can kind of decide uh, how extreme are we going to go with this. Are we going to put it everywhere or just here and there. And I like to do it on the ones where, where, the, where they will be pretty, pretty obvious if the triangulation goes wrong. So this one you can see, 
uh, the squat. I say it will be from a perfect side view. Then we have this one point here. Then this one point is lower, and then this one point is higher, and then this one's higher again. It's a little bit hard to explain, but then if it's gonna be triangulated like this. The quad will fall like this, where these are down. The way we can stop bringing shape by triangulating it. It's a little bit hard to explain, but let's say uh, we triangulate it like this. The problem now is that these two points right here are the highest points which is gonna create like a, a V effect which we don't want we want that V effect to be happening here so we gotta triangulate it here Again, I'm not going to be too worried about doing this everywhere, just showing you an example. I don't want to take this too extreme, it's going to take a long time to do. There we can pretty much come in and just do it like this. We don't really need to think about it. Especially on stuff like this where we do have a, a bigger fold, then we actually need to do it. We can also then move those pulleys around to make it fit better. So now I think you can pretty clearly tell that we need to take a, an edge going like this, and then one here. Now that fault is going to be captured in the low poly a little bit better. It's like small touches like this that really polish out the low polys. It's also touches like this which makes the process a lot longer and more miserable. So you do got to find a nice balance between having some of them and not going crazy with it for your own sanity and for your time that you're investing in it. Generally speaking for my own personal projects I do like to spend quite a lot of time on the low as it is very satisfying once you have a really nice clean looking low to me. Got that fold in here. Again, in place like this, here's where we really should be doing it. If we take a look at my default triangulation, you can see it's default triangulated wrong here, which is creating this awkward space. You can see it's not capturing that fold. Now if we just do this, now it's actually capturing that fold. It 
could just do this with history recording disabled so it's a little bit faster because you don't have to go in and keep deleting history I try to move the actual verts to the highest and lowest points Now if you get a point like this, but you just cannot get it to triangulate right, you can do an extra cut, like this. And then triangulate here, and here. I think we should triangulate that one like that. And do the same here. Add an extra cut. And triangles like this really don't matter. All that I care about is keeping the shading nice, especially for a helmet, there's not going to be any deformation at all, almost. But you could have some deformation here, maybe if you'd like. You can just see those intersections slowly but surely pop away because we're following the folds better now. That's starting to look pretty nice and clean. Looks like we have some stuff popping out here. So I think that's far enough to take this now to add some thickness. So adding thickness when I first started was uh, a living hell because I didn't know how to do it. But as soon as you know how to do it, it's easy. Just make a duplicate. Then we go solo. Put this on normal. Now just deflate that. This one's going to be a little bit challenging because we have like some weird stuff going on here. So just a little bit and that should be fine. Uh, definitely a little bit more I think. Let's go ahead and invert the shading. Now you can see our actual thickness. Let's get our high here. Yeah, that needs to be way more. Before we do that, let's fix this up a little bit actually. Can duplicate this. And let's prepare to thicken it. With that I mean we have to get rid of certain stuff like this. You'll see when we do a thickness it's going to be a little bit easy when we got rid of all this. So we can use UV shell actually, it's going to make it a lot easier, just going to undo that. 
So I've got to think a little bit smarter. We can just use the UV shells as selection tool. And then we can get rid of most of the stuff that we don't need. Which is amazing. So we can actually just take this whole thing and then invert and delete. So again, gotta be even smarter about the way I work. We don't need this whole thing, so I'm gonna try to select that loop, delete that. Same here, select the baffle. I'm trying to just get something that we can cut away. So this now we can select that all and delete it. Anything here we don't need. And we don't need this. This will be a little bit more clear when I start adding the actual thickness where we don't need this. If now anywhere where we have a baffle we don't need it. And baffles like this, we can... Uh, let's keep it for now, actually. So now we're getting a way much simplified version of our mesh. So let's look where it's still connected. So let's try this. Now this one should have way less errors when we deflate it. Go ahead and get rid of those last baffles here. Let's 
We're just gonna collapse everywhere where we have a baffle. I'm just looking for a simple grid like topology without all this detailing. we can start bridging this stuff now let's connect to just like that now we gotta stop merging this now I'm just simplifying the mesh. I'm hitting G to repeat that merge action. Let's all smooch shade this. That's starting to look pretty undetailed, which is good. Also use the target weld. Again, try to get all those baffles out. Usually I prefer collapsing instead of deleting because it will give us like an average of the two which is great. Let's get rid of some wacky polygons like that. Let's grid those out. just come in by hand and we start modeling not sure why it's recording history this I think it is this is not recording history but it will become slow that's strange <laughs> 
can also just take this and do fill a hole. Then we can start connecting. So you can see this can be a little bit faster in some, some cases. So it's recording sim uh, history while well, it's not supposed to. Not sure why. That's pretty annoying. So I do think I prefer the, the fill hole option. It's a little bit faster, I think. Let's see if this works, if we can select like all these. Nope. So let's see what happens if we select all this and this. Now say connect. And this Maya being stupid, I wish it did a better job. Make this thing small by hitting minus, so it's not in the way. Now that we have a good base to work from for the thickness, I'm gonna make safe as well. Let's just go ahead and deflate this. Usually uh, you wouldn't make all this inside, but I'm gonna have it in case I do wanna make like a render where the interior is showing. But like usually you'd have more like a we get pre prepare this in the high. Then you'd have a topology like like maybe this where you only have this as the, as the actual inside and then you cut away this. And you do want to make sure that uh, you do a deflation. 
because the topology needs to match one to one on the outside and inside and then you make it come together like that so now we can take this actually let's take this one first like this one live and try and mesh conform it's not doing an amazing job so I'm just gonna kind of push in with hand by hand I'm gonna be way less careful here. This is the interior, I don't care too much about it. The only part that are like actually important are these, where they're really close to the border. Topology doesn't have to be a one to one match to the outside exactly, but you should try to get as close as you can. But let's say here we can't. This just, um, if this were to deform, it would deform like uh, the same and you won't have any clipping. But of course, uh, something like this isn't gonna deform, so it can be a little bit more uncaring with it. And try to save some more polys. And I don't want any of this to be touching the, the rough edge here. That will become more clear why later on. But for now, just know that we have to avoid that at all cost. So, red here is touching, so that's bad. But we really want to keep those layers in mind. again to the feature don't really have to because the interior interior so usually the next step is to take this and this then you just select them both merge them together, combine, and then usually you can just take, combine, and then usually you just take this and this and you hit bridge. But because we edited the topology so much, we cannot really do that. So we have to be a little bit more planned about it. Let's start here. This will bridge fine. So we're going to look to the point where one bridge. And then we bridge up until there. 
This should all be bridge and fine until we get to those baffles. So bridge. And then bridge. That's how we're gonna add thickness, at least the base of our thickness. So all the way up until the baffle we can do that. See here we're already running into a mistake. So we can simplify a bit, doing less. Now that we added that little thing, go ahead and relax. Now let's fill it up here until we get the baffles. Take a life off, so add that eco back. So now here we need to add the baffle eco back, so like this. Now we can bridge that fine, excuse me. Do the same here. So one, two, three. That's all. So you can see it's pretty easy to actually get that detail in here. Just gonna know how to do that with thickness. And I don't want to do the triangles here because I do want to keep some nice clean loops here. So we can actually add some more topology here to capture the shape better. You can see how adding thickness now became super easy and it's not complicated at all. It is getting really high because we're doing the whole inside. But uh, since this is not deforming too much, not at all almost, we can take this and we can start reducing the poly count. Just like that. We will save that for a little bit later. And bridge that all up. So now we've got to work a little bit by hand on these parts. One thing that's important that we keep a nice loop here still. So we can just take this all. Make sure it's somewhat straight and bridge. Straighten this out on the surface line, just sliding it. So go ahead and screw this inwards.
Now here we can merge it up again. Remember, don't put triangles here in the first loop. Then this whole piece I'm just gonna fill. Collapse this stuff. Get rid of those details here. And the thing it is, the, the more you don't have to follow the topology as well. And especially this doesn't have deformation, so we really don't need to follow it too well. One thing that we do need to follow is the, the high, of course. Wish we had like a proper thing for this that could do this automatically. start collapsing some stuff here as well, save a bit on the poly count. Now if we select this whole loop, go to UV editor, let's map. Think a little bit, how do we do this? We can select this whole UV shell here pretty much. I guess we can just uh, take all the UVs that are messed up. And we can take all this, and this will be the interior. Let's map, plane map. Then let's also soft shade this all. Over here, let's do another soft shade. We can do it to edge parameter, soft shade. So we can fix the shading. So now let's repeat this on the other side. I'm gonna get, keep the, the first interior edge pretty clean. Like the only unclean thing that I want is baffling, uh, getting those baffle details in there and putting it to triangles. And then anything after the 